Bibles. If you hear something rattling in my mouth, by the way, I have to have a throat lozenger in there because, I'm, as you know, I've been dealing with <coughs> sickness, so it's going to help my throat a little bit out tonight. So if you hear that, I apologize, but I'll try to keep it from making any noise. Now open your Bibles to Revelation chapter 8. We're going back to the trumpets. Before I go any further though, if you haven't read the pastor's blog, the summary notes on this trumpet teaching, there's my copy, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half pages. It gives you just a, a summary of what I taught concerning Revelation 8 and the trumpets. Now, <coughs> If you haven't downloaded it or printed it out or whatever you do, I suggest you do so and keep it with the teaching so you can refer back to it. So that's available now on the pastor's blog. Revelation 8. Let's look at verse 13. And I beheld and, and heard an angel flying through the mist of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of, these, of the three angels which are yet to sound. Whoa, whoa, whoa. In other words, if you thought it was bad, If you thought it was horrific, what we already know about the first four trumpets, I got news for you. It's not going to get any better. It's going to get worse. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And the fifth angel or messenger, and the reason why I want you to download or print out these pastor blog summary notes on the trumpets because it gives you a vocabulary which is important to have of vocabulary that <clears throat> breaks apart the Christian nonsense that's out there that says these verses are so and so of things that are somewhat unbelievable that need to take place that haven't happened yet according to many teachers of prophecy and are still waiting to happen most of them believe through during a time what they think is a great tribulation and if you're new to the last day series I recommend you try to catch up as much as you can as fast as you can because <clears throat> I get into the great tribulation plus many other things that are important to know prior to ever even studying or listening to someone preach on this subject matter that we are on now. But woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Buckle up. What this messenger is saying It's going to get worse. And by the way, 
let me just take a sidebar here for a minute. Go to Matthew 24. We've been there many times. I just want to set the record straight. We'll start with verse 15, but we're going to get to verse 24. When ye therefore see the abomination of desolation, and early on the last day's teaching, we've come to recognize that as the Dome of the Rock. Spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso read it, let him understand. Let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. See, there is a woe in itself. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe, well, here's a woe, unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray that your flight, why? Why, woe? Well, if you read the previous verses, because you're going to be on the run, my friend. It even warns us, if you're on the housetops, come down. To take anything out of the house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. That is a woe. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in winter, neither in the Sabbath day. For thou shalt be, for there, excuse me, for there, then shall be great tribulation, as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. Just think about it. From the beginning of the world. That means what was coming down the timeline would be considered a great tribulation such was not since the beginning of the world and before the flood it got pretty horrible to exist but this is going to be worse and I think the main reason behind why it's worse, because since the establishment of the abominable desolation, well, actually, almost 100 years before that, when Muhammad came on the scene and brought with him Islam, Islamic beliefs, and what it produced, in many cases convert or die and like I said I think one of the reasons the main reason why this is such a woe and for that uh, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time nor ever shall be is because the many deaths and suffering that would come by the hand of Muslims in that area in the Middle East. Now it spread even further out than that. But when you stay in a timeline, it's the Middle East and Israel's included in that, by the way, that would have to deal with this woe. And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it night. not. Here is a Messiah, here is a Savior, or there is a Messiah, or there is a Savior. He is not. For there shall rise false Christ and false prophets and show great signs and wonders insomuch that it, if it were possible they shall de deceive the very elect 
the very elect. Now, in Matthew 24, people are always looking for false Christ and false messiahs and false prophets in the plural. Now, there's many that have an Antichrist message. And Antichrist is, in a simple definition, against Christ or instead of Christ. But that's not what it's saying here. It's not plural, by the way. For there shall rise false Christ, in the King James and other versions, it gives you the impression what it is saying is that there are going to be many false Christs and false prophets. That's also in the plural. No, there's going to be plenty of deceivers. There's going to be plenty of people that either preach heresy or preach of the religion that will lead many astray. In a sense, they're all antichrist. One, if they're against Christ, and two, instead of Christ. There's only one the Christ. There's only one the Savior. There's only one the Messiah. And that is Jesus. Only one that can save you. And that is Jesus. But the Greek is, I, this, I think this is where mistranslations or bad translations slip in. It's pseudo Christos in the Greek. Let me write that down. Some of you have used either Christus or Christos. Pseudos Christos. It's not singular in the Greek. I mean, it's not plural in the Greek. It's just a false Christ, or false Messiah, or false deliver. Pseudo being false, and Christos is Messiah. For there shall arise false Christ. It should be a false Christ and a false prophet. And if you listen to the earlier teachings on this subject matter and this verse, I've pointed out, if you keep this whole chapter in context, especially from verse 15, it's talking about Islam. It is Islam that brought in the abomination of desolation. It is Islam that would bring on the woes, woes and woes, that lead up to verse 24. For there shall arise a false Christ. Who's the false Christ? Allah, which is equals false God. Who's the false prophet? Muhammad. Let's just put Muhammad equals false prophet. Pseudos Christos is a false God. That is Allah. This verse is referring to Allah and Muhammad because he would be the false prophet that would introduce Allah. Now, Allah was on the scene before Muhammad, but he took Allah and personalized it to Islam Supposedly, and of course, I've covered that on this subject too, receiving from an angel the message, which eventually became Islam. And shall show great signs and wonders. Well, the first great sign was his visitation from an angel, supposedly, that started Islam, that started the false religion, 
that produced the Quran eventually. And wonders, signs and wonders. Let's not forget, in Jerusalem, supposedly he took off in a white horse and visited the heavens. And if you look into the details of Muhammad's life, especially after that visitation of the angels, there were several so-called miracles taking place. And I'm not going to review all that stuff tonight, but I just wanted to point that out. Insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Who's the very elected? If it was possible. The elect is referring to the nation of Israel. And I believe you can include the church into that too. The true church. But I just wanted to touch on that for a minute. Let's go back to Revelation 8. Sometimes reviewing that and adding something additional will give you insight to all these woes. And the fifth angel sounded. Now the angel there is a messenger as <clears throat> I've already preached. And I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. Here again we're seeing a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And you have to go back to Luke 10, 18 once again. You don't have to go there, but for people that didn't listen to the first or the, the previous teaching on this subject, I'm going to read it real quick. So we conclude it in this teaching also. <clears throat> Luke 10, verse 18. And he said unto them, this is Jesus speaking, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. So Jesus did not, Jesus didn't fall from heaven. He ascended and descended. So this falling angel, this falling star is none other than Satan. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit and there arose a smoke. Let's write that down. Smoke. Smoke equals false religions. equals Islam. Smoke also means omen of trouble and destruction. So he opened the bombless pit and there rose a smoke. There arose trouble and destruction brought on by false religions, brought on by Islam. And out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, it would not become a flyby little religion or belief system, it would take root because it came out of a great furnace. This smoke would bring trouble and destruction would follow it. That was the release from the bottomless pit. And the sun, and there we have once again Sun, S-U-N, once again it is Jesus. He's the son of righteousness. And 
for a refresher. You don't have to go to it, but I'm going to go to it. Malachi, last book of the Old Testament, chapter 4-2, four, four, referring to Jesus here. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son, S-U-N, of righteousness arise. And we made the connections last time. Son equals Jesus. With healing in his wings. Only Jesus could provide that type of healing. And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. So son equals Jesus. So write that in the margins there. And the air were darkened by the reason the smoke of the pit. The air. What does air symbolize? Well, let me tell you. <clears throat> what was the result of the air being darkened by the reason the smoke of the pit? The illuminating, brilliant light of the gospel could no longer be heard in the Middle East because of the smoke of the false doctrine of Islam. Because of the smoke of the false doctrine of Islam. Now air can mean several different things. <clears throat> but the Holy Spirit Sometimes he's refer referred to in the scriptures as air. It symbolizes the Holy Spirit as a purifying, vitalizing power that revives and makes someone alive. So let's just put Holy Spirit down. It symbolizes the Holy Spirit as a purifying, vitalizing power that revives and makes someone alive. And how does that happen? By the preaching of the Word of God, the Gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Like I said, the illuminating, brilliant light of the Gospel. And when that no longer could be heard, sure there's a pocket here or there, but when it no longer could be heard, in general, across the Middle East, including in Israel, because of the smoke, the trouble and destruction that came from it, of the preaching of the false doctrine of Islam. You got that, folks? So let's continue. And there came out of the smoke locusts. Let's write locusts down. <clears throat> and there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. This equals Islamic jihadists. Let's just call them that. What are locusts? Well, we know what locusts bring. They bring misery to those facing its wrath. Locusts cause, causes a lot of injury. They cause a great deal of injury. <laughs> You don't have to read very much to figure out Islamic Jihad is do, does just that. From the beginning of its days, even up to the now. We forgot, not, we've, we've pretty much forgotten all about what happened in 9-11. And what Islamic Jihad did to this country, United States of America. But they're working even in today's Date of what's the date again? I don't remember. 
Thursday, April 11, 2024. They're alive and well, and they're marching on because their ultimate goal is to rule the world and have everyone bow to Islam. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, that's the Islamic jihadists, and unto them was giving power as the scorpions. What are scorpions? I'm running out of room here. Let's see if I, you can see this. Yeah, scorpions. Poisoner. One who poisons. One who poisons. And unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. Of the earth have power. What they're doing is to spiritually poison unto not only just physical death, but more importantly, spiritual death. <clears throat> now, I'm going to read to you something kind of interesting concerning the locusts. These mighty horn blasts warn all of you Makai about awesome calamities coming upon the earth. I agree with that. Satan is the star who falls from heaven. And he's allowed to open hell's gate and release an army of demonic locusts. Now this mostly came from someone that preached what I'm about ready to read to you. Dr. Wordsworth that lived almost 200 years ago. As soon as the devil opens the door to the bottomless pit, huge billows of smoke, smoke poured out. The smoke is so thick and pervasive, it hides the sun, making the sky black and oppressive. Well, I think it has more meaning to, than, than that, which I already gave it to you. But let's continue. Of course, these locusts aren't real insects. They're demon-possessed, Satan-controlled men. In the last days... Well, let's just, I'm not going to get into that tonight. The Greek word for scorpion here means poisoner or who poisons, which I already covered. The locusts are also described as men of war. And it gives the uh, scriptures that they're covered with breastplates of iron and so forth. The image here is of an army of demonic tormentors. Prancing like horses anxious to fight. They had tails like scorpions. And there were stings in their tails. And their power was to hurt men. In the last days, Satan, turban army of tormentors, will, replace, will, be, will be released upon the earth. And these demon-driven fanatics will bring destruction and fear to all mankind. Theology... Theology, theologians, excuse me, from the 17th century, that means in the 1600s, theologians from the 17th century, including many Puritans, believe this army of locusts to be Mohemians. They saw the locust invasion as a worldwide Islamic jihad or holy war. <clears throat> it's been difficult to find these 17th century works. It's just not available out there. If you get lucky, you could pick one up. It, it costs, but to me, it is worth it because what I teach concerning these Verses and what they were teaching back in the 1600s is it kind of ironic? It didn't take long for the devil and his demonic army and the unseen world to convince silly Christians 
with a lot of Christian science fiction doctrines created to produce what's being preached predominantly around the world today. It didn't take long for Satan to interrupt the teaching in the 1600s and early 1700s that got it right. Maybe didn't get all the details interpreted correctly, but they were on the right track. And the train went off the rails, my friend. And we got all this Christian science fiction doctrines. Theo theologians from the 17th century, including Mary, many Puritans, they saw the locust invasion as a worldwide Islamic Jihad or holy war. Years ago, many years ago, a well-known writer depicted the scenario in a book he wrote about Islam and Muhammad. He saw the billowing smoke in Revelation 9 as the doctrines of Islam. Like a thick cloud, Islam blinded people's eyes, shutting out truth and darkening their minds. It even had power to blind entire nations. Wordworth, that's the person that wrote that book, Wordsworth, you can't find it anywhere, taught that out of this doctrinal smoke would come a locust-like army. He believed this to be a Muslim army. It would be made up of vicious, long-haired, turban soldiers. He was not the only one, by the way, in this time period. And they would rampage through nation after nation enforcing the Islamic religion. This actually happened at the birth of Islam. Muhammad appeared in the 6th century, founding the Islamic religion and leading a great army of horsemen. He swept over much of the then known earth. They were against Roman Catholics, Greek Catholics, Jews. They overtook all of Asia, from the Euphrates rivers into the Middle East to Constantinople, the site of present-day Istanbul, Turkey. They captured the Holy Land, all of Asia Minor, including the territory of the seven churches in Asia, Greece, all of the eastern Mediterranean islands, and northern Africa. Then they crossed the Strait of Gibraltar to Spain, where they founded a Muslim kingdom. Finally, they entered France, but they suffered a defeating, I mean, de devastating defeat at Tours. Of course, you know what that is, because I taught that early on. That was charged by the Hammer Martel. He pushed him back. At that point, the mighty Islamic flood sweeping over Europe was stopped. Today's leaders and diplomats are claiming Islam is a religion of peace. But everything in Islam history cries out against this. Most wars taking place right now are between Muslims and some other groups or nation. The truth is, Islam was born in violence and it has been a religion of sword ever since. Mullahs and ayatollahs enforce Islam's laws by flogging people and by chopping off their fingers, limbs, or heads. Such brutal practices are commonplace in many Muslim nations. I'm skip over most of this. But you pretty much know, if you've been listening to this teaching or reading the books, many of the things that I just said, because I already covered those things. But back to the verses. There came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, the Islamic jihadists, and unto them was giving power as the scorpions. They were full of poison. And they spread across the earth with power to spiritually poison unto death. To spiritually poison unto death. The verse continues, says, It was commanded that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree. What does that mean? Because we already know what some of these colors mean. But they also have an opposite meaning of the earlier definitions that I gave you. Here it's only pointing to Islam was not able to convert the true saints. Unfortunately, there was not that many of those. But, and it was commanded that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, 
neither any green thing nor any tree. Islam was not able to convert the true saints. <clears throat> Why? Because they had the seal of God in the foreheads. You're not, you're not going to be able to see that seal, but God knows who His true saints are. Who His true saints are. And then it goes on to say, and to them it was given that they should not kill them, in verse 5. But they should be tormented five months. Five months. I'm out of time. Isn't that a shame? What are these five months? We'll see. Review this teaching if you need to. Get the vocabulary down right. Get the meanings down right. And then we'll move on. What is this five months? Play a song.